All right, so this question is about permutations. We're just gonna call it apply permutations. And uh, basically given a list, well, this A, so like A, B, C, D. This can be a, le a list of anything, but we'll use characters for now. So given a list and a permutation, which we'll call P, um, say this was two, zero, one, three. Um, just another list, this one does have to be integers. Uh, basically apply this permutation to A, and by that, it means that, okay, the entry at A should go to the second index, so zero, one, two, so this should be A. Um, B should be go to the zeroth index. C should go to the first. And D should go to the last one. So the intuitive way is basically to do, or the brute force way is to do what I just did. So, you know, it's just one pass, it's O of N runtime, and, but it also requires O of N extra space. Because this result array will be returned. Um, you should, when you, how do I put this? So this is tech, this is defined as extra space because if they give you a function header, um, for this one, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, something like public void. And then you have A and P in, in the uh, function header. So meaning you're not supposed to actually um, create a new array and return it. Otherwise that would be O of one space. Um, you're supposed to modify A and then return nothing. So that's the brute, brute force solution, um, but we can do better. So looking at this, um, one way might be to maybe sort this and every time you uh, sort something. So if you just sorted this list right here and then every time you made a swap or something like that, you also swapped this you could probably get it down to n log n time. Um, but let's try and do it in just O of n um, with no extra space. Well, if you look at this, A, B, C, D, two, zero, one, three. What do you do in your head? Well, when we did that earlier that we actually said, okay, the first thing we did was move A to the second array. Okay. So what if we just swapped everything? So, right. So this first step right here, what if we said, okay, A needs to be at this index. So what if we just swapped A and C? So your first iteration would be, uh, C, B, A, and D. And then you also swap these indexes because you kind of, those, those need to st still match up. So one, zero, two, three. So now A is correct. Um, and we move on. So we say, okay, uh, let's look at we'll still look at this C because this isn't correct. This is not zero. So um, let's swap this with wherever it's supposed to go. And it just happens to be this. So in our second step, we would say, okay, B, C, A, D, zero, one, two, three. And we would continue on and we say, okay, well, this equals zero, so that's good. This equals one. And you would go eventually go to the end and say, oh, that's great. We're actually, this is the mapping that we're looking for. B, C, A, D, B, C, A, D. And it was done all in place um, by modifying both the A and the perm arrays. Let's see how that would look like in code. Um, implementation is pretty simple. Um, so you can see we have our 
our perm, I'll actually just call this P. And um, we're gonna be looping through everything at least once. So sorry, the zero, we'll go to a dot size and then we'll go through. And um, what were we actually doing? So the first thing we were doing was comparing um, we, we, if we get to a point where like, say we were given the array like this, zero, one, three, two. On our first step, we would look at i equals zero, and we would say, oh, p at i also equals zero. So we actually don't need to do anything. So you could say something like if, um, you know, p dot get at i, not equal uh, i. If it does equal, we'll just move on. If it doesn't, then what do we need to do? We need to swap. So collections.swap, and what way are we swapping? Both of these. So in our uh, list of actual numbers, we'll be swapping i and p.get at i. And then we also need to update the um, list of the mapping. So same thing, p dot i and then p dot get it i. And then when, while we swap, we might do a bunch of swaps in a row. Um, let me think if this would work. So if we swap, in this case where we swapped the first time, we swapped these two values, but we didn't want to move on. Um, we still had to take care of this. So this will actually be a while loop because we might have to do it multiple times. We basically just want to keep on swapping until this first value is a zero and then we move on until this value is a one and a two and a three and so on. So that's all then runtime all one space. Um, there is a way to do it. Your interviewer might ask you to do it without uh, any additional storage. Um, so, uh, you know, like we did here, but also not to modify P, which is the perm array. And I've actually tried to do this and I can't get it. My ideas were to somehow encode the permutated array into like it by like XORing it into the A. Um, that didn't go anywhere. My other way is to just give up on the run the, the O of N runtime and do an O of N squared type deal where you we actually search for um, zeroth index, move things over there, but that didn't work. And uh, but yeah, if you guys find a solution to that, I would love to know. But that's applying permutations. If you can get this solution, your interviewer should be happy. Anything else I would say is extra credit.